Professor Lewis here. And what we're going to be doing in this session is talking about how to use the P3500s with our standard gauges that we're going to use in most of our labs for Engineering Science 2141. We have our two boxes here. Now this box can be used standalone as one channel only. On the P3500 we have up to 10 channels and that's going to give us more flexibility versus the P3s that only had four channels. And so the only other change in these units from the blue box is basically this is only going to repeat, uh, record our values in strain units, micro strain, and not the capability of going to grams, PSI, and all those other units that we saw in the unit. So a little difference in these units. Um, I do like the fact that we can go to, to 10 channels. And the, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to be using probably in a lot of our experiments multiple channels. So what we're going to probably do is come in here and hook this channel box up to the main unit here. And there's a series of wires here, and basically we're going to connect them all to these various leads right here. Now the red's going to go to red, the black wire's going to go to black, the white wire's going to go to white, and the green to green. And then we have a choice. We have one yellow wire and we have two connections here. And if I grab the packet for what we're going to be using in most of our labs is the micro measurement strain gauges here. And these are our simple strain gauges. Let me turn this over here. It talks about that it is a 120 ohm strain gauge. And so if you look here, there's 120 ohms and there's 350. So we're going to connect that yellow wire to this connection right here and then we're going to hook our ground here. So let's go ahead and make those connections and what you want to do is make sure that you're clamping onto the exposed wire portion. You're going to back this off. There should be a hole in that post and what you're going to be able to do is feed that wire in there and then screw that down on there and check to make sure the wire is attached properly. Let's go ahead and hook the rest of these up and see how it looks. With the power off and we've got all of our connections, what we're going to do is I'm going to just use this strain gauge right here as an example of how to hook up and we're going to hook this up to channel one right here. So I'm going to go ahead and pull its wires right here and if you notice we've got three wires. One is black, one is white. We know those two are going to actually be connected in the quarter bridge that we're going to be doing for this strain gauge and then we have a red wire. And that's going to lead us to channel one, these connections on the top roll here. Now again, these you push down and there's going to be a little hole on the side and you're going to put the wire again on the exposed metal portion and not the insulated portion. So I'm going to come in here and do that and put my wire in there and you can kind of feed it to the side. Now one of the things we have happen a lot of times is people leave the wires extended out long enough that they make contact with the next post on the, on the next channel. So I'm going to come in here and we hook red to red and we're going to hook white to white. I'm going to pull my wires out of the way here, do a little housekeeping. I've got my white wire pulled on there. Now then I have the black wire. And the black wire is the one that we're going to hook to the yellow. So don't go to the black terminal. This is going to go to the yellow. And what that's going to do is connect our strain gauge from this to the yellow using the 120 ohm setting there that we have selected when we screw that in. Now that is going to let us have channel 1 correctly hooked up and we're ready to turn this unit on. This is the P3500 and in this box we have a power off switch and if you push it it just stays off. Basically the only two buttons we're going to be pushing here is going to be gauge factor or run and you can push either one of those and it will turn on. Now do all your connections with the unit off if you can. What I'm going to do is come in here and set my gauge factor for the gauge that we have. Now. Before we do that, I want to talk real quick about this battery up here. There's a little gauge up here. If it's all red, that means the battery is probably dead. If we see some white like this, hey, I've got good battery life. There are two little D batteries in this and that's what's powering us. So let's go back and talk about this gauge factor. Gauge factor for most of the gauges that you guys are using, we went out and bought the same gauges from micro measurements. And this is what we have on most of our lab experiments that you're going to be using. You'll see that in other labs. We'll talk about these gauges and how they work. But in this session, what I want to do is talk about how to hook this thing up, and we're going to need to read this data. So on the back of this sheet, we have that this is a 120 ohm strain gauge, and we have a gauge factor here of 2.04, and that's our gauge factor. Now these over here represent offsets that we'd apply for temperature. We're going to do all this at 75 degrees. These were done at 75 degrees, and so standard operating temperature is good. But if I was to go down below freezing or something, I may need to study up and learn how to compensate for the temperature differences as thermal expansions occur. So we're going to put our gauge factor at 2.04.
Right now, we have a gauge factor that's almost there. We have two knobs on gauge factor. The first one is going to be our rough settings, course setting. You want to make sure that you're in the 1.725 setting, so it's set there. This is our fine setting over here, and it has a little lock on the side. If I go counterclockwise, it's going to let me turn this relatively easy. If I push it down, it's going to put some resistance on there and not want to turn. And so I don't accidentally bump it and adjust it from there. So I'm going to pull this off and I'm going to come in there and we're going to set this to a 2.040 setting. And we're there and we've got it locked. So I locked it and we're locked in. Now we've set our gauge factor. That's going to apply the gauge factor for this channel if we're doing just this unit alone or since we've hooked this switch box on, we're going to be able to apply that gauge factor to every channel. So it only lets you put one gauge factor for all channels. So we need to make sure the gauge factors are all the same for those. And that's going to be true in most of our labs that we're going to be doing. So let's go over here then and look at this unit. Um, we have this nice selector that lets us select different channels here. And if we didn't have this box, we would just be working with channel, basically the initial channel that's on this box. And since we've hooked it up to here, we're going to make sure that we're on gauge setting one. So if you didn't have this box and you were hooked up here, you could adjust your balance for the strain gauge right here. Now what is balance? Balance is kind of like tearing out a scale. We're going to, you know, I've got my strain gauge currently hooked up to a beam or a coke can or something, and I'm measuring the initial forces and stresses that are applied to that structure. And I need to balance it out so that when I put more force on there, I can get the difference, the true amount of strain in terms of micro strain being recorded here. So if I was just using this one right here, I would just adjust this balance. Now I would suggest go ahead and put this up at zero right here so it can be applied evenly to all these and we're not going to do the fine adjustments over here. This is going to be our fine adjustments for our strain gauges over here. We've got it selected to one. That means we're going to use this knob right here and again it has a little break or a lock to lock it down. I'm going to turn that counterclockwise so I can turn this and I need to go ahead and put this in run mode. And what run mode is going to do is let me see how much micro strain we have on this structure on that load cell and right now it's not zeroed out so we want to zero it or tear it out so I'm going to come in here and slowly turn this knob until I can get to zero. Now again you want to make sure that nobody's putting any force or vibrations system work. We don't want any change in there so you're going to notice it's very sensitive and I like to say if I can get down to where it's just one or two fluctuating then that's going to be pretty good and you notice it's just changing ever so slightly there and I'm, as I locked it, it changed a little bit more. So I'm going to come back and adjust it and lock it and see if I can't get there. Okay, I'm going to call that good. Uh, if it fluctuates one or two micro strain, let's be happy with that. Um, at this point, we have a plus or minus on this, and I want you to pay attention to that as we go through loading on there. We've basically balanced out that strain gauge, and if I was going to do channel two, I would switch it to channel two, and I would use its balance and go for that and then three and four and on and on. I'm going to put it back on one and I'm going to go to my structure and I'm going to put a tensile load on my structure and if you notice that strain gauge is going up and I'm seeing a positive strain. Now I'm going to come in here and put a compressive load on that and if you notice it's going up in the negative direction. So I want to pay attention to if I have positives or negatives there in my micro strain units that I have. So at this point I think we pretty much covered everything about these units and I hope that helps you out and have a good time on your labs.